Alabama, I had the pleasure of experiencing hot summers. And by hot, I mean sizzling hot, often too hot to go outside and play with my brothers. However, one of my favorite ways to spend those hot days was by strawberry picking. It was worth going out in the heat because I would come home with a pail full of the bright red fruits, juicy and sweet, not to mention the countless others that I'd eaten along the way. My mom taught me to look for the best berries, the kind that slid easily off the branch and sometimes left sticky red juice on my hands. I would bring the bucket to her after what my childhood self thought had been hours and hours of picking, going up and down the rows of strawberry patch, bending and picking, bending and picking, and of course eating too. My mom would analyze the fruit that I picked, seeing if some of the fruit was unripe or a little too squishy, and throwing those pieces aside, she would replace them with some good berries. I never thought about how all those strawberries got there in the field. The long hours of the farmer plowing the ground, sowing the seeds, watering them, plucking up weeds, and pruning the vines. It takes a lot of work. If the strawberry runners are left to grow on their own, they can become a maze of twisted vines that stifle one another and can't produce any fruit. Today's gospel talks about just such things. Jesus says that he is the true vine, and the Father is the one who grows the vine. We are the branches. This is a passage representing God's relationship to us. God planted the vine, Jesus, in our midst so that we would see God close at hand and follow him. By abiding in Jesus, as Jesus says he abides in us, we will produce fruits that are good and pleasing to God. Now, all this talk about abiding, what does that even mean? Abide means to remain. On the eve of his betrayal and arrest, Jesus reassures the disciples that he abides or remains in them. Even though he will be leaving the earth physically, he will continue to be with them, to abide with them. Abide is an intimate word. To abide with someone who is sick, for instance, would mean to remain close by their bedside, perhaps throughout the whole night and the day. It would require remaining present with them, to give them your undivided attention, to give them a listening ear. Abiding involves devotion of time, energy, and presence. So, Jesus forever abides with us, never leaving us, and always nurturing and caring for us. But Jesus commands us also to abide in him. That's a big request. We who are endlessly busy and distracted, how can we abide in him? How do we give freely of our time, energy, and space to God? Today I'd like to look to the other scripture passages to demonstrate three ways that we can abide in Christ. First, we must have open eyes and open ears. In the reading from Acts, we see Philip abiding in Christ by opening his eyes and ears to God's call on his life. Philip goes and sits with the eunuch, sharing with him the story of Jesus in the scriptures. Abiding in God involves keeping our eyes open to God in scripture and in the world. Furthermore, Philip listened to the Holy Spirit and trusted that he should spend some time with this man. We must never stop looking and listening for God in creation, in the ordinary events of every day and in our interactions with the people we encounter. I wonder if it would help us to linger every once in a while and spend some time marveling at God's work in the world. We can abide in Christ by remaining open with our eyes and our ears. Next, we can abide in Christ by having open hands Let's look to the words of Psalm 22 we read today. We hear the psalmist praising the Lord. When we worship God, here in this space 
and out in the world. We are essentially lifting up our hands and our lives to God in thanksgiving. The psalmist also speaks of the vows that we make in the assembly. Our baptismal vows are promises that we have made to God, though sometimes we may not think of them. I challenge all of us this week to look at the baptismal service in the prayer book, perhaps sometime today, and be intentional with just one of the vows for this week ahead. The psalmist furthermore says that his soul, his very being, will live for the Lord. When we open our hands in radical hospitality to the stranger, to our next door neighbor, to a person in church whom we haven't met perhaps, or on the street, we are living for the Lord. So, the second way, abiding in Christ involves open hands. Finally, we must have open hearts. In John's first letter, we are told to love one another. We are to love not out of fear or out of obligation, but because we know God first loved us. And in knowing this, we can work to open our hearts to love, even for those who have hurt us. Jesus is the vine, and we are all connected to the vine and to each other by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are all the branches of the vine with different gifts. But in God's eyes, we are equally beautiful and equally capable of producing good fruit. Lest we become tangled branches that stifle each other's growth, we must open our hearts to recognizing the unique but equal nature of all of the branches on Christ's vine. Abiding in Christ requires open hearts. Open eyes and ears, open hands, and open hearts. This openness to Christ at work in our lives and in the world is the start to the transformative process of life in Christ. Without Jesus, we are unable to produce any fruit. The vine sustains us and gives us life. We need God to prune us to cut off those brambles and weeds that hold us back from our relationship to God and to one another. There are many other voices in the world that will say, come, abide in me, that lead us down to a path of destruction and unfruitfulness. Yet Jesus will lead us to life and abundant fruitfulness. Like the farmer who works hard to tend her strawberry fields before they begin to yield fruit, so God prunes us, the branches of the vine. The vine will exist with or without the fruit. Yet Jesus desires that we bear good fruit. In fact, we were created for that very thing, to bear good, beautiful, ripe fruit. These good fruits, at least by Paul's standards, include love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the beautiful fruits that God desires for us to produce. Which of them comes easiest for you? Which of them is more of a struggle to produce? Just as my mom looked over the fruit I picked as a little girl, so as to make sure I had only the ripest and sweetest strawberries in my pail, so God desires that we produce good fruit. Because we are human branches, we are bound to often struggle to produce fruit. Yet God is always abiding with us, constantly tilling the land, cultivating the soil, sowing the seeds, watering the vines, and pulling the weeds. Just as I had not realized the work that went on to care for the strawberry fields, so we also may not realize God's hand constantly at work in our lives. Yet when we branches choose to abide in Jesus the vine, with open eyes, ears, hands, and hearts, we will all begin to produce the beautiful, sweet fruit for which we were all created. Amen. Amen.